So in this video, we're going to solve Newton's second law for an object in free fall with quadratic air resistance. Remember, quadratic air resistance is when the air resistance is proportional to the velocity squared. So in this situation, we can solve for the terminal velocity, again just setting the gravity equal to the air resistance. And so with quadratic resistance, the terminal velocity is equal to the square root of mg over c. And then notice how this is different from the linear air resistance case. Okay, so now we're ready to start solving the equation. You know, this is going to be a lot harder than the linear case. So we set up by writing out the net force. And of course, we're, again, we're taking down to be the positive direction. So again, this is a differential equation. And so we're going to divide by the mass. And then next, what we're going to do is factor out the g. And you know, you'll see the reason for this soon. So if you look at c over mg, well, it turns out that that's just the, uh, the reciprocal of the terminal velocity squared. So we're going to rewrite that as v squared over vt squared. And so again, this turns out to be a separable differential equation, which means we're going to separate the v's to one side and the t's to the other side. So this might look tricky to integrate, but it turns out, you know, if you didn't know, the an integral of this form, 1 over 1 minus x squared, if you integrate this, this is just the inverse tangent hyperbolic function. So integrating this actually turns out to be quite simple. We just have to do a quick u substitution where we make u the velocity over vt. So that way we have an integral of the form 1 over 1 minus u squared. And then we can use this uh, integration identity. So carrying out the integration, we get vt times the inverse tangent hyperbolic of uh, u. And then on the other side, we just have gt plus c. So this c is going to be equal to 0 if we assume that the initial velocity is equal to 0. And we're going to assume that the initial velocity is equal to 0. Because if it isn't, then it gets a lot more complicated. So if the initial velocity is 0, then the inverse tangent hyperbolic of 0 is equal to 0. So now we're going to move the vt to the other side so we can rewrite this expression. So if the inverse tangent hyperbolic of v over vt is equal to all that stuff on the right, then that's the same thing as saying v over vt is equal to the tangent hyperbolic of g over vt times t. So after that, I just move the vt to the other side immediately, and we get this expression. Now the next thing to do is integrate again to get the position function. And so to integrate tangent hyperbolic, all I have to do is remember that it's really just sine hyperbolic divided by cosine hyperbolic. So all we need to do is a u substitution. We make u cosine hyperbolic of all that stuff. You know, this is the, exactly the same way as how you integrate tangent, the norm, normal tangent. Except remember that the derivative of cosine hyperbolic is not negative sine hyperbolic. It's just sine hyperbolic. So we make the u substitution and then carry out the integration. And so our final answer is going to be vt squared over g times the ln of cosine hyperbolic of g over vt times t. And then add the c at the end. But if we make the initial position 0, then the c is going to be equal to 0. Because, you know, cosine hyperbolic of 0 is 1, and ln of 1 is 0.